Well, right, everybody, welcome in. We, boy, did we just have a crazy rain shower downtown. So if you are east of us, and you most likely are, it is a rolling in. So everybody, just careful, eyes to the sky. It's going to be a perfect morning to stay home because we have some really interesting information for you right now on our show. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk a little bit about what happened just a few weeks ago over at Miller Fillmore uh, Gates Hospital. It was just a few weeks ago that our next guest uh, worked on a handful full of MS patients um, to test uh, the efficacy and the safety of a minimally invasive procedure aimed to reduce their MS symptoms. Now, I'm going to introduce to you our doctors who were the principal doctors involved, Dr. Lad Levy and, of course, Dr. Adnan Siddiqui from UB Neurosurgery. Uh, you're here to explain what you did because a lot of people really weren't sure we heard on other channels it was a cure for MS. We heard a lot of things. I was so happy to be there with you watching. Let's talk about this study, which study it is, and what you did. And we do have some video from that day where we can actually show you uh, what was going on. So good morning and welcome. Thank <laughs> you. Good tell, morning. tell us a little bit. This is what they call the Italian study, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, the disease of MS has been associated with inflammation in the brain. Mm -hmm. The cause of that inflammation remains to date unknown. And uh, this outside the box thinker, uh, a vascular surgeon in uh, Italy by the name of Paolo Zamboni, has uh, suggested a new thinking about MS. It's not known whether he's correct or not. It's just a new uh, hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And that is that blocked veins in the neck and chest may either aid or cause or worsen multiple sclerosis. That's his hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And that's why everybody has given him credit and he has called it the liberation procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you did, you had, you've gotten permission to take step one of this which was to test this hypothesis on a handful of patients over at uh, Gate Circle. Exactly. This is the first study, we believe, worldwide that's going to test the safety of this procedure. We believe this can potentially help patients, but uh, we want to do this under the rigors of science in a controlled study. And first we have to understand, is this safe to do? And when we mean this, what is this? We're going to take uh, special types of balloons and pop open these blockages. So mm -hmm. the theory, as Dr. Siddiqui said, is that the veins that drain the brain are clogged mm -hmm. and the brain now can't drain the blood and there's an inflammation that occurs and depending on what part of the brain is affected, symptoms of speech problems, cognitive problems, inability to use your arm or leg or walk, all these symptoms that you hear from MS patients result potentially from the inflammation caused by blocked veins. So as Dr. Siddiqui said, what we did is under the rigors of a safety trial, took a handful of patients from the uh, U.S. and Canada mm -hmm. and popped open these blockages with special devices using the minimally invasive techniques that we've often talked about we use for stroke patients yes. at the Stroke Center at Millard Fillmore Gates and through some of the research we do at the Toshiba Stroke Research Center. And the UB. veins that you worked on were primarily in the jugular. So th the disease thus far, the way we understand it, the hypothesis is that these large veins that drain the, the large amount of brain and spinal cord are the ones that are affected. Mm -hmm. The jugular veins do the lion's share of drainage as far as the brain is concerned. And then there's this other large vein in the chest, which is called the azagous vein. So we primarily concentrated on these three veins, although we looked at a variety of veins as part of the study. Can we make the, uh, the leap then that MS patients all have steno stenosis in their veins or blockages in their veins or do we not know that yet? Well these patients were very carefully screened prior to this procedure to see if indeed they had blockages. So after rigorous screening using non-invasive imaging techniques we believed that they had blockages causing their symptoms and therefore they were eligible for the safety study. Not all the patients that we actually looked at in the study were found to have lesions and the data will be coming out soon in peer-reviewed peer journals. But for the patients that did have these blockages, uh, it, we demonstrated, we hope, that uh -huh. this was a very safe 
procedure. And it, and it really was. When we say minimally invasive, we were talking about, uh, a, it, I mean, people think it's a surgery, but it really was just the insertion of a catheter through the groin right. that went up through the chest and where and it searched out basically where this narrowing was. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So what we did in this study is utilize the same techniques that we use for stroke treatment using the blood vessels of the body as highways. And we typically enter these highways in the leg, in the veins and arteries that drain uh, the leg. In this study, because we were interested in looking at veins, what we used were the veins that go to the leg mm -hmm. and use these tubular highways to advance tiny little tubes all the way into those large veins that we just talked about. And once we were there and we noticed the narrowing, then we used the techniques as Dr. Levy described that we have utilized for years and made Buffalo really one of the most important places for stroke treatment. We utilize exactly the same techniques to open the veins in the neck. Your viewers chest. would probably know this from the heart. Mm -hmm. A lot of your viewers probably had coronary stents, may have had heart attacks, and probably for the past few decades, that's where many of these technologies began, opening mm -hmm. black vessels of the heart. But through evolution and technological advances, we're able to miniaturize these devices, get them a little bit more flexible, bring them up to the brain, and now we may be, again, I, I caution, may yes, be maybe. looking at a whole new subset of patients that can be treated with these techniques for MS. And, and we should let people know that I had a chance to talk with some of your patients before and after, and they were very comfortable. They weren't even anesthetized, so to speak. I mean, they were numbed, but they were awake through this procedure, which really took maybe just a couple of hours. That is precisely um, uh, how it went. Uh, the important thing for this first phase study is do no harm. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the idea that we'll be able to prove the connection and the link is I think premature. Mm -hmm. But before we engage in these studies we have to make sure that we are not going to hurt these patients. Or make them worse. Or mm -hmm. make them worse. Yeah. You have the opportunity to really see uh, the cutting edge mm -hmm. neurosurgery that happens at Millard Fillmore Gates uh, at UB. It's not just the MS patients. The techniques that you uh, were there watching are the same techniques that we can treat aneurysms, AVMs, other diseases of the brain. When people think of brain surgery now, technology has evolved that sometimes we do actually have to kind of open the hood uh -huh. and, and take a peek inside and work with open brain surgery. But many, many times we can move devices minimally invasively through a tiny needle in the artery here all the way from the leg into the brain while the patient is completely awake, just mildly sedated uh -huh. with some local, local uh, numbing medicine and some uh, Kind of what we call happy juice. Well, I have to tell you, everybody, there was, there were, it was very crowded outside of that uh, operating room because there was a lot of people waiting and watching in wonderment, watching the catheters go through the monitors, how you folks work is unbelievable. We should be so proud to have this kind of level of, of not, not just surgeons and, and neurosurgeons, but um, the fact that we're involved in a study that could be changing so many people's lives. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a break. We know we got a lot of people out there with phone calls. We're going to take your calls and find out now what's next and what we may have learned from first round. We'll find out about the second round too right after this, so stay with us.